Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my November wrap-up. All right guys, so November was by far the oddest reading month I've had of all 2023. I read 11 books, which is less than my average. I read some five-star reads. I read some 1.5 reads. I also went down a dark mafia rabbit hole for like almost the entire series. It was such a weird time. I had not planned on reading any mafia this month. Read an entire series. Um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was interesting. I really became a mood reader in November. Not sure how I feel about it. But anyway, I'm very excited to talk about these books with you guys. Now, I will be talking about two sequels that are highly anticipated and were books that I was so excited to read this year. Unfortunately, both of them kind of let me down, one way more than the other. So I will be talking about that in this video. But anyway, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about the books I read in November. And starting off with fantasy romance, first up we have A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden. So I actually read this along with Tiff from Tiff Talk Pages and then Hannah from Hannah Blackwell. Um, Hannah picks a different book or a different fantasy romance book every month and then picks co-hosts to read the book with her on a live show and I just think it's so fun. But anyway, I read the first half of this book and I really enjoyed it and I'm so happy it was Hannah's pick because I probably wouldn't have picked this up otherwise, but this is following a girl that is living with her sisters and she has the power to heal. Now, unlike other witches in this community, for some reason she is able to call upon her power without doing any sort of like magical spell or enchantment. Anyway, one day she goes home, she's cooking dinner, and her brother miraculously appears. Now her brother was sent off to war um, a few months prior, and she finds out her brother is actually a deserter. So her brother tells her, hey, I think some of the people that I stole money from are following me, so like we all need to flee like right now. So anyway, they all go to flee, and then something happens that forces our main character to have to go back to the house, where she is obviously caught. So she ends up making a deal with one of the soldiers who have now like taken over her home and says, hey, if you don't go looking for my brother and my family, I will help heal your soldiers because like I can do that. So she is then taken captive by the Onyx King and is forced to heal his soldiers. And the story goes from there. So I will say, this book is very predictable. Um, if you have read fantasy romances, you will guess exactly what is gonna happen in this book. However, it was fun. Like, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I After I read the first half of it with Hannah and Tiff, I then read the second half the following day. And I ended up rating this four stars. Like, it was a very enjoyable and fun time. And I look forward to see or seeing where the story goes. So I will definitely be reading the sequel when it is released via audio. And next up, I read The Witch Collector by Chris Weeks. So this had been on multiple TBRs, however, the audiobook kept getting pushed back, and I finally had a chance to read it, and I am still not exactly sure how I feel about it. I feel like it's been three days since I've read this, and I'm still kind of gathering my thoughts, but this is following a girl who lives in this community of witches where every few months or so, a witch collector comes, and he takes a girl or a witch to the Frost King and they are never seen or heard from again. However, by doing this, they're keeping these like wards and protection up. So the community does want to give these women away because like they do want to stay protected. But at the same time, they don't like losing family members and friends. Anyway, our main character's sister was taken by this witch collector and now she is out for revenge. So when the witch collector comes to collect another girl, she decides that she is going to try to kill the witch collector with this dagger that she has that she knows is useful in killing witch collectors. Anyway, things go awry and the witch collector and the main character end up kind of traveling together in the hopes of finding the Frost King and the main character finding her sister. And it is an enemies to lovers romance, so you can kind of figure out like what happens while they are traveling. But I did really enjoy the magic system. I thought it was very fascinating. The reason why I might end up rating this probably like 3.75 actually has nothing to do with the book, which is unfortunate. The narrator, the male narrator in particular for the audiobook is the same male narrator that does the From Blood and Ash series, uh, the one that voices Castile. I don't know what it is about this guy's narration. I am just I'm not a fan 
I feel like he has the same exact voice for every single character he plays. Like he doesn't change it at all. And I just, I can't, I can't listen to him. It just, he infuriates me for no really good reason. It's just, this is a me thing. But anyway, because I had to listen to his chapters, um, and I should have just switched and physically read it. Like that was completely my bad. Um, so yeah, that's why I probably am gonna rate it like 3.75. Also, there are some parts that I feel like could have been fleshed out just a little bit more, but overall this still was an enjoyable read and I do wanna continue with the series. I just didn't like this quite as much as I liked Dawn of Onyx. And next up is my biggest disappointment of the month and that is A Curse of True Love by Stephanie Garber. This was supposed to be the third and final book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And when I finished this book, I actually gave it a four star. However, I then had a live show with my friend Isa where we discussed this last book and my rating quickly changed, probably to a 2.5 star, only because there is so much left unresolved and unanswered at the end of this book. Like we just have no idea what happens to certain characters, also, there are curses that are lifted with no explanation of why. So I just, I feel like this book was such a letdown, which is so upsetting because I loved The Ballad of Never After, book two in the series. It's my favorite YA fantasy romance of all time. So for this book, just to be such a letdown just hurts. But I don't want to really give away too many spoilers, but my biggest critique of this book is the fact that uh, there is a POV character, or the author decided to make a character a POV character, and he actually gets most of this book. Um, most of it is seen through his point of view, or a lot of it is seen through his point of view. And I didn't care about him. I didn't want him. I wanted Jax. I love Jax. He's my favorite book boyfriend in the YA fantasy realm. Uh, but instead, we got another character who I did not care about, and who I also thought was doing some very interesting things for how he was presented in the earlier books. If you guys wanna have a conversation about this with spoilers, like DM me, we can talk. But overall, I just, I wish this was more of a conclusion and some things were explained and more fleshed out. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So although I did like the very end, like I like what happened for Evangeline, I just wish that we got a little bit more. And like the rest of the bookish community, or at least 90% of it, I also read Eye and Flame by Rebecca Yaros. Now, I am one of those people that absolutely adored Fourth Wing and I gave it five stars. So I will say I did not enjoy Iron Flame quite as much as Fourth Wing. I feel like this is definitely a setup book. Um, the pacing was slow at times. I also feel like we are given a lot of information and this is definitely a book I'm gonna have to go back and do a reread because I feel like there are so many things given to us that I am gonna lose track. So I will definitely be doing a reread of this book and a recap video when we're closer to book three being released. But I did like this. I gave this four stars. I think the humor is very, very well done. And I am not someone who really likes like rom-com type books, but there are dragons in here that have some really good one-liners that I found myself laughing out loud. Also, Violet as a character, I feel like she has grown a lot. Was she doing some things that definitely frustrated me? Hell yes, uh, there were definitely some things that Violet did that I was not a huge fan of. But overall, I did enjoy this book. I did wish we got a little bit more Zayden. However, I feel like the next book is gonna be very Zayden heavy, considering the ending of this book. Also, the ending of this book, I was not a huge fan of. Um, I wish that was either saved for the next book or we got a little bit more, um, just more explanation of how that ending ended up taking place. Um, it also could be that I just need to reread this and I missed something. But overall, I gave it four stars. I definitely enjoyed it. This is one of my favorite series of all time at the moment. Um, and unless the third book is absolutely dreadful, I have a feeling this is gonna be one of my favorite series of all time. Um, I might be basic, I just, it has dragons and it's fantasy romance and it's enemies to lovers. It's everything I love. So I am very excited to read book three. And if you read this, let me know down in the comments what you think. And moving into dark romance, we have my favorite read of the month, Butcher and Blackbird. This book is spectacular. I love it so much. So this is following two vigilante serial killers and they both go to kill the same person. So they have this like chance encounter and they decide they're going to compete every year to try to kill the same serial killer in this like unnamed location. So every year they slowly fall more and more in love, but all of their like cute, adorable moments has a backdrop of horrific murder. So like all of the serial killers they have to kill are obviously influenced by like 
other serial killers. So there's like a Hannibal Lecter type character that has a dinner party and there's accidental cannibalism. And then there's a Texas chainsaw type killer that's like going around and you hear the chainsaw in the background and he's like chasing a girl and they're having like cute small talk trying to decide if they like each other. It's just, it is so adorable and yet absolutely grotesque, but also really funny and also really spicy. This book has everything. And I will say the audiobook for this is my favorite audiobook of the year by far. Joe Arden is actually the narrator and he does the best job. Oh my gosh, he kills it. So if you have not listened to this, you absolutely need to. If you are not a fan of audiobooks or you're thinking about giving audiobooks a try, this is my favorite. This, it's so, it is so good. But anyway, I gave it this five stars. I will 100% be reading more from this author and I just, I cannot wait. And the last six books are all part of this same Mafia Romance series because I went down a rabbit hole that I could not get out of. So it started with The Devil's Pawn. I actually purchased this at Indies Invade Philly. I met Natasha Knight and I just thought this book looked really cool. So this is about a single father who is part of the IVI, which is the secret society. So I don't know if this is technically mafia, but it feels very mafia. It's secret society, kind of the same. Anyway, we are following this single father who wants to get revenge on this family that he believes killed his baby mama slash wife. So he decides he is gonna take the oldest daughter from this family, make her his wife, make her have his child, and then potentially just kill her. So anyway, it is their story. So it's between Jericho and Isabel, and it's how they kind of slowly fall in love despite the fact that their families absolutely hate each other. So definitely check trigger warnings, I will say. The men in these books do really deplorable things to their future wives or their wives, and then eventually they are forgiven, but like there's some dark stuff in here, so just know that going in. But this was my favorite in, or this was my favorite two books, because it's actually a bind up of two books in the series. And then after this book, I ended up reading The Society, which is three books. I forget the exact names, I'll leave them on the screen. But that is following a girl whose family is in IVI, but she does not want to be a part of the secret society. But then her father becomes very, very ill and her brother ends up essentially selling her to a rival family and kind of the same type of thing. He, the main guy, plans on marrying this girl, having her have his child, and then potentially killing her. It's kind of like the theme throughout all of these books. So it's their romance, I will say. I didn't quite like this one as much. It is much darker than this book, um, although this is really dark. And I just feel like some of the things that the hero does to the main girl are unforgivable. Like he's horrible to her. So like, I didn't love that one quite as much, but I still gave it, I think 3.5, four, and then 3.5 stars for the, those three books. And then last up, I read The Tithing and I still have to read the final book in that duet. And that is a little bit more like paranormal secret society. So that is following a, the Wild Bloods, and then I forget the name of the other house, but it's essentially these two families, one of them comprised of fallen angel descendants and then witches. So at some point, these descendants from the fallen angels killed one of the witch uh, ancestors, and now there's a curse on both their families, and the only way to stop the curse is for one of the fallen angel descendants to marry one of the wild blood witch women and then hang her and that should break the curse. So I am currently at the part where the girl just realized like that's what's in store for her and she's not happy about it. But anyway, the tithing and the pestilent, I think possibly, um, they are definitely more like paranormal, a uh, little bit less, there's still secret society, but not quite as like mafia secret society as these books, but still really good. And I'm excited to read the rest of the IVI series. Um, I wish I had read them prior to meeting Natasha Knight, because now I feel like if I meet her, I'm gonna totally fangirl. But anyway, really enjoying the series. And if you have any really good dark mafia romance recs, leave them down in the comments below, because I love a good like age gap, single dad mafia perfection. All right, guys, those are all the books I read in November. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of the books I've mentioned. And I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.